Hello and welcome. As the number of coronavirus cases continue to rise in India, indeed and across the country, and particularly in cities like Mumbai, the question now is, as we go forward and as we are likely to emerge from a lockdown and the number of cases are not likely to come down, what are we doing in terms of spending on public health? Is that spend likely to go up? And is that spend sufficient to take care of this vast uh, in infrastructure health challenge that we are likely to see in coming months and years. So how much do we really spend as a, as a proportion of GDP or gross domestic product? How much should we be spending? And is the 1.5% of GDP roughly that India spends, is that enough? How does that compare to other countries? And if we have to spend more, where do we find that money? Let's try and find out uh, the answers to these questions from Dr. Arvind Virmani, who joins us now. Dr. Virmani is the former chief economic advisor to the government of India and also the chairman of the Foundation for Economic Growth and Welfare. Dr. Virmani, thank you very much for joining us. So uh, let me start with uh, a fundamental problem with our approach to health, uh, which uh, I and others have been pointing out for at least uh, 20 years. That is... Uh, we focus too much on what is ca called personal health as against public health. Now, of course, uh, we had to have and we tried to build right from the beginning a uh, health, uh, public, uh, no, a government health system. You know, the, the concept of government and public is, is different here. So one has to be very careful. So we set up a system of primary, secondary and tertiary health care starting right from independence. But uh, we miss this concept of public versus private health for first one thing. And second thing uh, was that the, the efficiency and quality of that health system was woefully lacking. And both these things are relevant in going for, towards the future. Let me start with the latter first, because in a way it's known uh, uh, and neglected. So, uh, uh, so, for, right. so, the, so clearly one of the things when I studied this problem 20 years ago was that uh, uh, the, the absence, the, the uh, uh, delinquency of uh, uh, doctors, nurses, etc. And from my memory, I remember that it was uh, roughly 40% uh, of the people who were supposed to go to these rural health facilities uh, and 40% of the total time at least, they were not present. So the system was really in name only and was, uh, you know, uh, functioned very badly. So that is a problem which has not been solved. Uh, I just want to mention that before I move on, that uh, the only solution that I could think of to improve quality uh, when I was asked to do a comprehensive study of the education and health sectors from a policy perspective was to, uh, uh, to suggest e-medicine, e e-learning, etc. Uh, to be provided into the rural areas, both education sure. and thing, and to have local people uh, mediating this thing. So that's the first part. The second part is public health, which is, of course, uh, much more directly relevant to the, the COVID issue. Now, what is public health? Public health, health has to do with vaccination, communicable diseases, exactly the kind of things we are worrying about today. And believe me, we have woefully neglected it. This, this is not only a matter of vaccination. Uh, you know, we've had malaria campaigns, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but conceptually, Till very recently, it was not part of the thinking of our uh, of our health system. Uh, and uh, the the second part is public health education is an absolutely fundamental part of this. Again, I'm not saying this in hindsight. And you have seen in the pandemic, the key issue has been public education. Will the public wear masks? Uh, how can they be induced to do physical distancing? So public education about health and hygiene. This is an ancient right. thing right. which uh, people pointed out 20 years ago. So uh, right. you want to move on? Let me just, okay, I'll finish uh, this part. So what I'm sure. saying is this has come with a bang again. The, the problem has not gone away and we have to address these issues uh, and, and not sweep them under the carpet again. Okay, so you're saying that what I mean, or whatever you've said so far is not so much to do with the expenditure that the government does or the lack of it, but more the tactical approaches it takes to, let's say, spread the cause of vaccination or find the vaccines for most young children, as the case might be. No, 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 I'm not talking about that. I'm sorry. This is exactly the point. When I was asked to do a study, this was exactly the choice. And it's not a new choice, so please don't ignore history. It's exactly this choice. 
and the the pressure from the politician was raise the money what i said pointed out very clearly i said unless you improve the quality just raising the doubling the health expenditures that was the proposal the doubling the government health expenditures will just double the inefficiency it won't give you better results and the pandemic has proved that because one of the arguments for that drastic lockdown was i understand i don't have any inside sources in the government but was the health establishments saying that our uh, rural uh, health facilities are very poor so let's keep all the migrant labor enforced and in the urban areas okay so this is not a hypothetical issue this is the choice we have between just saying we right. will double i will discuss that part also but this is a choice which we cannot ignore let's not ignore it just saying double the expenditure is not a solution okay got it so uh, we'll come to and that's an interesting point that you made you're saying that the thinking was uh, i mean hypothetically because we don't know for sure that we want to keep the migrant labor in the cities and uh, prevent them from going to uh, areas or zones clearly where the public infrastructure is not strong and yet that is exactly what's happened exactly so so this attempt to uh, I, I, if we are going to discuss that further let me tell you there was also a bit of a problem of the other side which brings us directly to the pan you know i gave a general problem which exists yeah. and which have to be solved but there was a specific issue with the pandemic and uh, i know this because i have uh, spent the last month or more re researching the pandemic so one of the things one found was that during the spanish flu uh, there were a couple of papers which seemed to which showed that as far as the uk was concerned the spanish flu spread through london slums of that time so th this fact i suspect was not known to our medical establishment i mean i i don't want to accuse anybody of anything but that is one possibility that they were not aware right. of this fact and therefore didn't take the opposite into consideration they considered one side valid that the health system is very poor from this perspective of a pandemic uh, in the rural areas but the fact that pandemics like this spread through the slums of urban areas is also a historical fact which probably uh, they did not know so I, uh, all right. i'm saying is that it was not properly weighed right so you you talked about the quality of intervention and and that's a, and that's a fair point so let's let's uh, hold that for a second now if you're saying that the quality has to improve i'm assuming that the quality will also improve if we spend more so are are, we, are you saying take spending completely out of the equation for now or for even for the next one year because okay. that, that's not something that we should be looking at no i i'm not saying that so the question the what i am saying is uh, uh, i think it is wrong to think in terms of uh, and i'll tell you what is the right uh, i say the wrong because you'll hear lots of people economists particularly saying this that's why i want to you know i know i have mm -hmm. discussed these things with all these people uh, so so the the way this thinking goes is oh uh, the world spends uh, 8% uh, the government average government in the world spend 8% we spend 4% so we must immediately double this expenditures this same argument i heard exactly the same 12 years ago okay and i said no please look at the system first devise focus policies okay that's the thing so what is the focus policies one yes uh, both the state governments by the way uh, i should not forget there's another thing which people forget very conveniently that health is uh, basically uh, uh, state government right. subject Gov uh, union only is uh, take responsibility for the tertiary hospitals and the education so th this has to be done at the ground level so uh, public health public health education you know if we think there's going to be a second wave there may be other pandemics the public health education must start today it goes into the schools it goes into your tvs it goes into your health system everywhere so public health education includes nutrition and everything you know people are ignorant i mean people who supposedly have credentials who came flying in from the us were told please quarantine yourself and they travel all over the country right you must have heard that case a famous case uh, uh, which was reported in all the media yeah. why because they just don't understand they they have understand it's not like they don't hear they don't understand what it means this education must be there okay so where yes testing labs okay uh, tons of uh, uh, medical people uh, police have said that you must have a testing lab which when there are rape victims that they test the dna you know so we cannot forget all these issues which are there so testing labs is a good idea 
uh, what the finance minister said that we will finance. Yes, that's a very important idea. These testing labs must be comprehensive and they must not forget the old problems. You know, all the history doesn't go away. You know, our tendency is, oh, there's a pandemic, so everything will go towards the pandemic. Wrong approach. By tomorrow, when if the pandemic is gone two years from now, it'll all be forgotten. All the other problems will remain. So, in summary, what I'm saying is focus. Focus on the problems, focus on the problems which have been there, plus the new problems. No problem with that. And then focus your expenditures on that, not forgetting that quality must be improved. Otherwise, it's no use. The next pandemic comes, the, uh, the resources right. out there are equally unprepared. It will not help if you double your expenditure. Assuming that we want, want to now increase the quality of intervention, we want to target our expenditure onto very focused areas, including, let's say, public education, education for children, uh, and creating the testing centers. So then how should we be looking at our overall expenditure on health? So certainly, once you have a proper plan, and this is where I would be a little concerned uh, at the system today, you know, uh, planning for the health system cannot be left only uh, to the health professionals. Like they say, running of the economy cannot be left only to economists and so, so on. It, it really uh, requires a multidisciplinary approach. And that is one of the things which unfortunately kind of has been lost. So, uh, uh, you know, when you have a multidisciplinary problem, the our standard approach used to be and pretty successful set up a committee with a diversity of exports, uh, experts to come up with a solution and, of course, present them with all these issues. These have to be in their terms of reference, otherwise they may not focus. And, and I would suggest that's the most important way to uh, start, whether it's a state government or the union government. 80% of expenditure uh, is in the health, is in the private sector or the private space and not in the public space. So essentially, uh, you and I are going to continue to pay most of uh, the cost of our health or meet most of the cost of our health ourselves. So uh, is that something that uh, we need yeah, to think good. about as well uh, yeah. now that we have uh, we are living in this new world uh, right. and, and a new set of public health challenges? Right, right. So that, that's a good question. And if you will give me a few minutes, I will explain. These are issues, as I said, I was forced to think about at a point in time. So what, th th this is correct. So uh, this problem was raised that uh, the, the individuals and especially lower income individuals and lower, I don't mean poor only, uh, but uh, anybody in the middle and lower class in a sense, spends much more on health as a proportion of income than in many other countries. I think that is a serious issue. So uh, the, the problem was, uh, again, because uh, after recognizing the problem, I have to go to the rural areas because, you know, we always say in the name of the poor and then do whatever we feel like for ourselves. So so what the what I found was that the quality of the private health care system also was equally poor, if not worse. Uh, you know, I don't want to name an ethnic uh, state thing. They're called ex-doctors. <laughs> I won't name that state. Uh, uh, in Rajasthan, there was a study which found uh, that 50% uh, of the uh, things were totally useless. That expenditure, you know, I'm just trying to dissect this 80% expenditure was useless on private. 20% actually had some positive effect, but 30%, I'm giving you rough things which I remember, had yeah. a negative effect on health. And this was not only in Rajasthan, it was in Delhi also. The numbers were slightly different in Delhi. So so, so some kind of, uh, 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 you know, uh, what do you call it? Not ranking, uh, what's it called? Uh, regulatory, uh, uh, you know, ra not ranking A, B, C, something like that, uh, which people can know and trust I think I found was an important thing. The second one I uh, is which I should mention before you go uh, the follow up question was insurance. So the other solution is, you know, if I'm very rich, I can probably self insure. But anybody uh, in the middle class, really the insurance is the key way to go again. So this is not something new. That is one of the reasons why I support what this government is doing in insurance, not because they come up with the greatest idea. But this is an idea we had 20 years ago, uh, I, and I have to give them credit for adopting the idea and doing it. So insurance is an important part of that. And, and the third is regulation of hospitals. You know, uh, uh, you will recall 
there, there was an allegation that uh, uh, hospitals were charging too much for uh, medicines they supply. But you know, that's, that they are intermediaries. Don't punish the drug supplier. You have to regulate the intermediary so that he can't add a 100% surcharge. Now, let the fellow who produces the drug charge what he wants and let competition take care right. of it. But when I'm in a hospital, when you are in a hospital, I have no option. You know, if I'm, I'm in the hospital bed and worrying about uh, dying or whatever, they tell you, you have to have this and that's it. So it's a monopoly. So, uh, you know, the, the analysis, again, I'm sorry to emphasize this is because I have tried to study this uh, problem. Now, I, all, it's all come back to me, though. I, before that, I told you I'm not a health expert, <laughs> but I have studied this problem deeply. And you have to look at the problem closely, which is why I suggested uh, this committee. I mean, that is one mechanism. You know, uh, I, I'm sorry to emphasize this again, but it's very easy to have this mantra that every problem the solution is increase the money spent. Right. Okay. But, you know, you double the problem, you know, and, and you must right. look carefully at the problem. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Okay. So, uh, I, I'm, we're running to the end of our, uh, the show. So, okay. uh, you know, so you've answered the first question, uh, which is uh, of the three that I wanted to, uh, I wanted you to touch on, or the three points that I wanted you to make. So, the first is do not throw money at the problem. And it's not going to solve the problem either. In, uh, and actually, it will double the problem or double the inefficiency. So that's number one. What are the other two points you feel we should be now focusing on in coming months and years uh, as we try and uh, find a solution to the virus? And if not a solution to the virus itself, but a solution to, to the manner in which we are responding to it? Yeah. So strengthen the public health system. Okay. Public health also includes, yes, that because I've not mentioned it, I want to mention this, the hygiene. The pandemic has brought out that hygiene is very important. Part of it has to do with public education, but a lot of it has to do with sanitation and sewage. You know, the, the uh, Swaj Bharat campaign was good in its place because it involved people, but that is not enough. It has to be the, the sewage systems of the country. Uh, again, I, I, I looked into this issue. Uh, you know, London at one point after the Great Plague, they revamped their entire sewage system, okay? And I think this is a good time as any to start thinking of doing that. You know, it's not an easy task. You have huge cities. I mean, we have in India, we have huge cities. It's going to be an enormous task. But unless we start thinking about it, the entire sanitation sewage system. So that would be my second uh, point. And the third point, well, is actually the first point that uh, focus on the public health aspects. There is where we can increase the money. You know, you cannot double the money on all primary health, all secondary health uh, system. There I would advise focus on new technology and use technology, but the public health system, as I call it, uh, there you, you should, uh, I agree with you. There, there is scope for expanding the amount of money uh, both center and states uh, spend on it. Right. Uh, Which include uh, the lab, testing labs, yeah. Sorry, sorry, come again? Which includes the testing lab, which you, you mentioned right, absolutely. And, and some of the other things, yeah. Right, absolutely. Dr. Birmani, thank you very much for uh, joining us and sharing your thoughts.